You clicked on the extended outlook there for East Coast Weather Association. I am meteorologist Mike Griffith for Carolina Weather Pro, working alongside Mid-Atlantic Weather, also East Coast Weather Association. It is September 13th, 2017, about 3.15 here on the East Coast. And just wanted to start uh, kind of moving away from uh, the tropics. Uh, it's just been a lot of discussion about Irma and even Jose out there in the Atlantic, uh, not thinking that he's going to have a real big effect on land. Uh, anybody saying that he's going to strike land, um, not very likely at this point. So I wouldn't really buy into that a whole lot as of right now. Uh, there could be an issue where he runs into some blocking up here in the uh, North Atlantic and uh, his track might be uncertain once he gets up north. Uh, but at that point, um, he starts to transition into a more extratropical system anyway. So uh, not thinking this is going to be a huge deal. What we're looking at right here is the Northern Hemisphere Infrared Satellite. And right there is Jose churning out in the Atlantic, making his clockwise turn. He's going to uh, kind of weaken because there's a little bit cooler water over here. And then uh, he's going to make kind of a loop and then head back up this way and then out to sea eventually. So looking at the tropic, looking at the uh, traffic here across the Pacific Northwest, uh, there is going to be a little bit of uh, snow falling out there in the Rockies up in Idaho and western Montana and the higher elevations there, probably above 6,000 feet. Uh, but nonetheless, it's uh, starting already and it's September 13th. Here comes a couple of storm systems there into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so the train is starting to uh, get a little bit active, some troughiness here in the western uh, part of the uh, North America and also the Gulf of Alaska here. And lots of the traffic is starting to increase here from northern Russia and Siberia. Uh, so it's going to start to drive cooler temperatures here into the Pacific Northwest, which in turn will give us a ridge here for the rest of September. Uh, so it's going to be warm and maybe a little bit of thunderstorms, or it could even just be dry. Uh, but I'm thinking it's going to be warm and thunderstormy. Uh, I might get a couple of rain systems, but just thinking it's going to be warm and and kind of a little uh, on the sticky side even here in the southeast. Lots of traffic coming off the coast of Africa over here, uh, which is just telling us that the tropics are likely going to remain active. Now, there is a, uh, some uh, dust here and uh, some Saharan dry air uh, up, up this way coming off the western coast of Africa as usual. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, the wave train remains a active here across the uh, entire continent of Africa. There's some stuff blowing up there, but then it dissipates But we're watching this uh, right here. Also in the Pacific, the uh, intertropical convergence zone, lots of traffic there heading west, although nothing really uh, significant has developed except for this little flare right here. The Gulf remaining quiet. Central America uh, around uh, Costa Rica. This is a place where I want to actually uh, move to. And uh, Panama. Uh, actually uh, looking like uh, some uh, traffic crossing over from the Atlantic into the Pacific. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, uh, might have had enough here in the United States. I've been living here for 36, almost 37 years in November. So uh, it might be time to go down to the tropical paradise down here in Central America and just uh, start over with a different life. I mean, we'll see. I don't know why I just woke up today and I was uh, longing for this little area down in here, Central America. Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's getting a little uh, active down there with a lot of uh, activity coming off South America into Central America as well. Um, a lot of, uh, here's the remnants of Irma, Irma right here in the United States, uh, just kind of sitting there. It's just going to fizzle out and eventually just move off to sh offshore. Okay, so what about the uh, model projections here for the rest of September? Looking at the GEFS ensembles, uh, Painto, a warm picture here uh, after Irma goes out to sea and cooled in the west and cold even with the snow up there in Montana and looking like the uh, western part of the United States is going to remain chilly while the eastern part of the United States remains warm uh, and probably quiets down a little bit, but it's going to be uh, toasty here in the east coast, uh, at least through the 18th or so uh, into the 19th or so. And uh, looking like it's going to uh, move into the uh, east here. And then it's also going to be uh, warm as we go into the 20th or so and then into the 21st, 22nd, basically uh, into the last week of this month. And then uh, into the 24th or so, 25th, uh, and then it's looking like cooler out west. And then it's just going to be pretty much the same pattern all the way through the end of the month. But then it flips uh, right around the 27th or 28th or so. 
uh, as we're starting to see a little bit cooler signs in the long range here uh, on the GFS, not necessarily the uh, GEFS. Um, so looking like uh, the GFS is going to have us cooler here in the east to end the month, and that's finally going to be the pattern flip right there uh, towards the end of the month. See, it goes warm right there, and then it goes cold into the uh, 28th or so, 29th. And that's how we would end the month according to one model. The ensembles keep us warm, but I think it's going to flip over to chillier at the end of the month anyway. <clears throat> Looking at the uh, ensembles here for El Nino, it looks like it's going to be neutral, maybe even a warm bias heading into uh, July, June, August, July, August, September, uh, August, September, October, September, October, November, October, November, December, and then November, December, January, looking like it's going to be uh, either a warm or neutral. Uh, if you take the average right here in between, it looks like it's going to be maybe slightly warm, maybe even neutral, uh, which is going to be uh, quite a busy winter here in the eastern United States uh, because it's uh, going to be conducive to a storm year and active here in the, U in the eastern U.S., um, so it's looking like the, uh, middle of the, uh, plots right here, the plumes are going to be, uh, in play for a, maybe even a, a weak neutral El Nino. Some of the models are indicating negative, which would mean a La Nina, which is what we don't want either. Uh, we just want neutral. So it would be, uh, really, uh, it, it would really be the, uh, neutral part right here is what I think would be verifying uh, more than likely as we go into the fall into the uh, winter. So what are the long range uh, climate models saying here from NOAA? Uh, we're looking at October here again. Uh, this could let me let me move myself out of the way there uh, so you can see and it looks like um, October is going to be a little bit chillier uh, maybe even colder than usual here for the whole month. Um, but with all this uh, ridging out here in the western part of the United States and Canada, it's going to push that cooler and chillier air east. And it's looking like it's going to be very cold uh, there in the east. Uh, chilly, I should say, maybe not very cold uh, to start off the month of October because the end of September uh, is what the GFS was seeing. So now the climate system is picking up on a chillier, maybe even rainier and stormier than usual October. I can see that happening. Not so much cold, but rainy and chilly for the month of October. So let's shift gears into November. Uh, November goes back to seasonable according to the CFS V2. This isn't perfect. It's not like I'm going to say that this is going to happen verbatim, but it just gives us an overall idea. Uh, but we want to look at the uh, winter months here. December looks like uh, maybe above normal for much of the eastern part of the country, maybe even the whole country. Who knows at this point? Um, it could go from uh, warm and then all of a sudden flip over to very cold in these weird neutral El Ninos, and that actually is the case according to the CFS V2. Very cold January of 2018. Maybe even right after New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, we could start to see the change here in the eastern part of the United States as it is going to be very, very cold here in the east. And then uh, heading into February and even March, it looks like more of the same here. Uh, this warmth here over Mexico is probably just something that it's seeing as uh, regular uh, temperatures down there because it doesn't really uh, get too too cold there in Mexico, except maybe in the mountains or so. But even down there, it's more like tropical. Uh, but up here in Canada, very, very cold for February. Even though this doesn't show it's spilling down into the southeast, I still think it's very possible for February since this is our active season down here. And all this cold up here in Canada is going to be open door for February to be a very cold year, a very cold month, I should say, compared to the past two years for sure. And then looking at... Uh, looking at March here, more of the same, even more colder air up here. So it's going to continue into March and probably into maybe even the beginning of the spring. We could see some uh, some below normal temperatures for sure. So what does this mean uh, as far as what our winter could look like right here? Well, here is the general pattern that we could be seeing. Of course, the snowy could dip all the way down into Georgia and uh, the southeast and the Florida orange groves could start to freeze up. Uh, not good news for those people down there, so I'd recommend having the Florida uh, orange groves ready to go for especially uh, January and February of this coming winter uh, because of the cold air coming down there. Two active jet streams, a polar jet, and then also the subtropical jet merging right off the east coast, bringing lots of nor'easters, snow and cold, active pattern, especially from the Carolinas up into New England, 
and that will be the pattern for this winter as of right now. This is subject to change, and this is kind of just preliminary, and we will update this constantly. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm East Coast Weather Association here on YouTube. Make sure you give us a follow, and also check us out on Facebook at East Coast Weather Association. Have a great time, everybody.